Hello and welcome to yet another video of Cornerstones of Math. Today's problem is very special because it is one of the questions from the quiz I took when I was studying Calculus 1 in my freshman year. Of course, I have graduated college long time ago, but this is one of the questions that I still remember to this day, and at the end of the video you will understand why. You have to find the length of a curve of y equals 1 half times x squared defined on x from 0 to 1. This problem is quite innocent looking and seems pretty simple. I mean, there is even a formula to calculate the length of a curve given in y equals fx form. The length of a curve y equals fx from x equals a to x equals b is given as length l equals integral of square root of 1 plus f prime x squared from a to b. In case of our function, the derivative is y prime equals simply x. Therefore, length l is given as integral from 0 to 1 square root of 1 plus x squared dx. And carrying out this integral is where your calculus skills can really shine. Here I will present you two methods to carry out this integral. The first method is trigonometric substitution. When we have 1 plus x squared, the most common way is to make a substitution x equals tangent theta, because then we can use 1 plus tangent square theta equals secant square theta to simplify the integrand. We also have dx equals secant square theta d theta, and theta equals 0 when x equals 0, and theta equals pi over 4 when x equals 1. So we have L equals integral from 0 to pi over 4, square root of 1 plus tangent square theta, secant square theta d theta, and this 1 plus tangent square theta equals secant square theta, and we are only considering on an interval where secant theta is positive, so this part simply becomes secant theta, so we have integral secant cube theta d theta. So we have to find the antiderivative of secant cube theta, and I will use two basic integrals to do that. The first one is integral of secant theta, which is ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. Many students just memorize this because it is the integral of one of basic trigonometric functions, so I will use this formula without proof. The other one is the integral of secant square theta, which is simply tangent theta. This is pretty obvious because many of you might also remember that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And we will also use integration by parts, which is pretty basic yet important integration technique. But how can we apply integration by parts on this? Well, first we split secant cube theta into secant theta times secant square theta, and we let u as secant theta and v prime as secant square theta. Then u prime equals secant theta tangent theta, the derivative of secant, and v equals tangent theta, the integral of secant square theta. Therefore, we have uv, so secant theta tangent theta, minus integral u prime v, which gives secant theta tangent square theta d theta. And tangent square theta equals secant square theta minus 1. So we have secant theta tangent theta minus integral of secant cube theta plus integral of secant theta. So we have secant theta tangent theta. In writing this first, we know the integral of secant theta, which is ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So this minus integral of secant cube theta d theta. So we have integral of secant cube theta on the left hand side and minus integral of secant cube theta on the right hand side. 
So the integral of secant cube theta is given as 1 half times this. So we have secant theta tangent theta plus ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. Using this result, we have length of a curve L equals this with 0 and pi over 4. And when theta equals 0, the terms give us 0. So we only have 1 half times secant pi over 4 tangent pi over 4 plus ln secant pi over 4 plus tangent pi over 4, which gives 1 half times square root of 2 plus ln 1 plus square root of 2. And this is the length of the given curve. Moreover, from this result, tangent theta equals x and secant theta equals square root of 1 plus tangent square theta, which is square root of 1 plus x squared. The result also suggests that the antiderivative of square root of 1 plus x squared is 1 half of x square root of 1 plus x squared plus ln x plus square root of 1 plus x squared. The second method of substitution is by using hyperbolic functions. The reason we use hyperbolic functions is because there's this square relation for hyperbolic functions which just follows directly from the definition of hyperbolic functions. Therefore, we let x as sine hyperbolic u. Then dx equals, the derivative of sine h is just cosine h, so cosine hyperbolic u du. Also, u equals 0 when x equals 0, and u equals inverse sine hyperbolic 1 when x equals 1. For now, let's just say inverse sine hyperbolic 1 equals alpha. Then L is given as integral from 0 to alpha square root of 1 plus sine hyperbolic squared u cosine hyperbolic u du. And 1 plus sine hyperbolic squared u equals cosine hyperbolic squared u, which gives integral of cosine hyperbolic u times cosine hyperbolic u du, which is integral from 0 to alpha, cosine hyperbolic squared u du. When we have to integrate trigonometric functions like cosine squared x, we do so by applying half angle formula for cosine, which leads to 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2x. Similarly, we can use the following half argument formula for cosine hyperbolic function. So we have 1 half times integral 1 plus cosine hyperbolic 2u du. So we have 1 half times u plus the integral of cosine hyperbolic 2u is 1 half times sine hyperbolic 2u which gives 1 half times alpha plus 1 half sine hyperbolic 2 alpha. And if you apply the double argument formula for sine hyperbolic function, we have 1 half times alpha plus sine hyperbolic alpha times cosine hyperbolic alpha. Here from alpha equals inverse sine hyperbolic 1, we have sine hyperbolic alpha equals 1 and cosine hyperbolic alpha equals square root of 1 plus sine hyperbolic squared alpha, which gives square root of 2. You know, from this square relation. And we can also find alpha owing to the fact that inverse sine hyperbolic has a closed form explicit expression. From y equals inverse sine hyperbolic x, sine hyperbolic y equals x, so e to the y minus e to the minus y divided by 2 equals x. So e to the y minus 2x minus e to the minus y equals 0. And by multiplying e to the y, we have e to the y squared minus 2x 
e to the y minus 1 equals 0, which is a quadratic equation of e to the y. So by the quadratic formula, e to the y is given as x plus square root of x squared plus 1. I used plus sign here because e to the y is positive. So y, which is an inverse sine hyperbolic function, is given as ln x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And using this expression for the inverse sine hyperbolic function, alpha, which is inverse sine hyperbolic 1, equals ln 1 plus square root of 2. Therefore, the length of a curve equals 1 half times ln 1 plus square root of 2 plus 1 times square root of 2, which is 1 half times square root of 2 plus ln 1 plus square root of 2, which is the same answer we have obtained by the first method. Actually, I can show you one more method of integration called Euler substitution. The Euler substitution is not just a single method, but rather refer to several substitution methods that allow us to integrate rational functions containing x and square root of quadratic expression ax squared plus bx plus c. The Euler substitution also deserves its own video, so in here I will only show you the method that works for this problem's particular integral. The gist of Euler substitution is that this method transforms the integrand function with square roots into the simpler integrand function using new variable t. For our integral, the method is as follows. Let square root of 1 plus x squared as t minus x. This is rather less intuitive than previous two methods, because there's no such thing as a square formula to come up with the method. Still, if we square both sides, we have 1 plus x squared equals t squared minus 2tx plus x squared. The key here is that we made a substitution in a way that x squared cancel out. So we can solve for x to obtain x equals t squared minus 1 over 2t. Therefore, dx equals, by the quotient rule, 2t times 2t minus t squared minus 1 times 2 divided by 4t squared dt, which simplifies to t squared plus 1 over 2t squared dt. Also, you can easily notice that when x equals 0, then t equals 1, and when x equals 1, then t equals 1 plus square root of 2. Therefore, the length of the curve L is given as integral, now from 1 to 1 plus square root of 2, t minus x, and dx becomes t squared plus 1 over 2t squared dt. And since x equals t squared minus 1 over 2t, we have t squared minus 1 over 2t here which simplifies to t squared plus 1 over 2t times t squared plus 1 over 2t squared dt. So integral. The numerator becomes t to the power of 4 plus 2t squared plus 1, and the denominator becomes 4t cubed. As you can see, there is no square root anymore and we have a rational function of t that can be easily integrated. We just split into multiple fractions, which gives 1 over 4t plus 1 over 2t plus 1 over 4t cubed. And by integrating, we obtain 1 over 8t squared plus 1 half ln t, then minus 1 over 8t squared, so we have 1 plus square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared divided by 8, then 1 half ln 1 plus square root of 2, then minus 1 over 8, 1 over 1 plus square root of 2 squared minus 1 over 1 squared. 
And if we simplify this part, we simply obtain 1 plus square root of 2 over 4. So this plus 1 half ln 1 plus square root of 2. And if we calculate this part, squaring and rationalizing the denominator and everything, then we simply obtain minus 1 minus square root of 2 over 4. This simplifies to 1 half times square root of 2 plus ln 1 plus square root of 2. And that's all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you in another video.